You're now tuned in to Bestseller University, giving you content and sharing information to help you as a new or experienced author go to the next level in your career, creating more opportunities for your book. Let's take it to the next level. Get ready for the ride, y'all. Hey, 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 what's going on, everybody? What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Bestseller University podcast. My name is Sugar Ray Destin Jr. I'll be your host. I'm also the founder and CEO of BOBM Publishing. We're a full service publishing house that helps authors with everything from the creation, the idea, the coaching, the editing, the marketing, the design, the audio books, anything that an author needs to be successful. We have it right here in house. So it's a one stop shop. We've been so successful with our signature launch program that the last well over 400 authors that we've worked with have all went number one on Amazon and you should be next. Now, before we get, get started, we got to give a huge shout out to our friends and sponsors over at Bestseller University online training platform. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Sugar Ray Destin Jr. I'm the founder and CEO of BOBM Publishing. We've helped over 400 new beginners become best-selling authors not just best-selling authors, number one best-selling authors. And so a lot of times we hear from people that haven't written their book or people that have already written their book and the buzz is gone. How do I keep this buzz going? Or how do I write my first book? Well, we've listened. We've heard you. We've heard you. We've heard you. And we've taken, taken the time to go back and create a university specifically for authors. It's called Best Selling University. The enrollment is opening up on March 1st. So less than two, less than two weeks from now, you'll be able to enroll in bestseller university. Now, is this, is this, uh, done for you publishing? No, this is all information that you can do at your own pace, self-paced courses that teach you how to write a book, how to market the book. And if you want that group or one-on-one -on -one feel, we have some additional, courses that are coming. We're bringing back our flagship course, The Business of Books Mastermind, which helps so many people to understand how to brand, how to market, how to build an audience and the opportunities that come from your book. So this is exclusively for you. If you've been sitting on the couch and you've been waiting on that opportunity to get your book out there, get it in front of the right people and maximize those opportunities, Best Selling University is for you. There will be a, an investment for it. But once again, most of the courses in Best Selling University are self-paced. We want you to succeed as new authors because believe it or not, we didn't start with 400 number one best selling authors. We started with a dream. We started with a plan. We started with a we started with fear in our hearts, just like you started. Um, and from authors who've been there and done it to now teaching you the strings and the ropes so that you don't have to go through the you don't have to go through the years and the months and the days and the weeks of trying to figure it out for yourself we put it all together for you in one platform so that you can go in for yourself and a self-paced self-paced time and if you decide that you want to publish on your own by all means the guides will be there if you decide that you want to work with bob on publishing by all means we'll have access you'll have access to our exclusive facebook group bestseller university but all we ask is that you take a look and take it serious this is your opportunity to take it to the next level don't sleep on yourself and remember everybody has a story it's time to write yours we love you guys and look forward to seeing you inside of Bestseller University. All right, all right, all right. Listen, we are back. We're back. And I'm I'm so ready to jump into today's podcast because today's podcast is going to be a game changer for those of you out there that are writing business books, but you can't think about what it is. You can't really, really figure out what is the topic that I'm going to write about going to be. Well, here's the great news. I'm going to give you a list of topics today that will help you to put some content out there that people are actually looking for. These are the things that people are actually looking for when it comes down to business books. So it's a great list of topics. As y'all know, I like to go high level, give you the answers. Then I'm going to come back and break it down for you so that you have a little bit more understanding of 
what each one of these topics is going to be. Um, so let's jump into it. The first topic is entrepreneurship and or starting a business. Again, we're going to come back and talk about what, exactly what that means and how to how to make it happen. Um, next topic for entrepreneurs or for businesses is marketing and branding. This one. Oh, man. Um, next is sales and customer service. That's right. I said it. sales and customer service. They do kind of go hand in hand. But let's talk about why. Next is leadership and management. Well, I know many of you out there are thinking, man, what is the what is the what do the managers here look like? What is the leadership going on in these businesses? It's a big problem that we can help to solve as business writers. And then the last one is one that every business needs but they just don't know where to find the help and the answers so we'll talk about that in a second so let's jump into it entrepreneurship or starting a business now everybody out there these days is talking about getting to the bag i'm getting to the bag i'm getting to the money right well there's a way to actually do it and there are certain systems that are missing so entrepreneurship and starting your business is huge everybody wants to be an entrepreneur but most people do not know the steps they don't know they don't know the different resources the different outlets that are out there so if you can go in and and take somebody through the steps of starting their own business step one is is maybe it's getting your dba your llc your getting incorporated maybe getting a 501c3 step two what about the business financing step three what about the system step four how to hire properly step five if you can break these systems down for people they're actually out there looking for it, right? The, there was a great series of books, and it's still a great series of books that's out there called Whatever, Whatever, Four Dummies. And this are for idiots. These series of books are so, they're so powerful that they have thousands of books on the shelves that are all under the same umbrella. Because guess what? People are looking for answers. That's why people spend so much time on Google so much time on youtube so much time in the search engines now the big thing is more people are going to this new uh search engine and so with that with that being said if you can break those systems and processes down there's a there's a space in the market specifically waiting for you as a business writer so let's start breaking those systems down for people entrepreneurship and starting a business because there's so many people that have the desire so many people that want to get out of the nine to five or the rat race, but they just don't know how. That's why people like Robert Kiyosaki are so popular. That's why people um, like Steve Wilco are so popular. That's why that's why there are so many books um, that people are looking for. But your voice is going to tell the story differently and it's going to attract those people who are looking for it that have been following you for a while. Next thing is marketing and branding. Man, I love marketing and branding. If you if you go through my podcast, listen, if you go through my Audible, if you go through my, my library here at home, you'll see that there are so many books that I have that are specifically around marketing and branding. The people that I follow are usually people who have information on marketing and branding. They're the greats in the industry, um, like your, your Russell, Russell Bronson, your Gary V's your Nikki Saunders, your Grant Cardones. These are people who are out there who have broken the game down and broken the systems down and they're helping others. But guess what? People are still looking for it. As a business, most people don't understand how to consistently build a brand. They don't understand how to, they don't understand how to make their brand stand out from everybody else. They don't understand the marketing that goes on into it, right? Most people think that marketing is posting once or twice a day. That's good, but is it is it truly marketing? What are the things that are consistently bringing clients in to businesses when it comes down to the market and the brand? If you can break those systems down for people, then that is going to be huge. Just like for authors, I often give you all information on how to market yourself as an author, how to brand yourself as an author. Businesses are looking for the exact same thing. And there are so many different types of businesses. Maybe you can put something together there are plenty of people who are starting T-shirt companies. You can talk about how to market and brand yourself as a as a as a as a clothing line. 
Maybe there are people out there who are speakers. They're looking for people who have who have information on consistently marketing and branding themselves as speakers. Maybe there are coaches. There's a there are ton, tons of industries out there that are looking for information about marketing and branding for their specific industry. Break down what does it really mean to market yourself? Marketing in terms of in terms of what your social media looks like, what your website looks like, what your what your uh, what your client resource management system looks like, what your your client intake, your onboarding process looks like. These are all things that people need to know as new or existing businesses and how to separate your brand. It's more than just a color scheme. It's more than just your logo. There are certain things that every business is known for. Teach people these small things, these small steps, and you'll separate yourself from the market because people are searching for books on, on marketing, on branding all the time. One of my favorite books was sent to me by one of my coaches, uh, Kendall, Kendall Ficklin, and the title of the book is Unbranding. Ironically, it's a great book, right? Think of those things that you can add value to people. But again, if you're going to give them the information, give them everything that they need, and it may even become a series for you in terms of marketing and branding. You can just put it out there in general, marketing and branding for entrepreneurs. And then you go back marketing and branding for musicians, marketing and branding for coaches, marketing and branding for fashion, marketing and branding. You get the point. This is a huge need for people who are in the business world in the business space, marketing and branding. Next is sales and customer service. And I know most of you are like sales and customer service. Everybody knows how to sell. No, the number one problem with new businesses is that they do not know how to sell or they're scared of rejection. And guess what? No is a part of the process. In any business, if you do not know your numbers, then you don't know how many people you need to speak to on a consistent basis. I remember listening to a Les Brown speech a, a while back, and he said some people are so negative that they have to say no seven times before they even get to a yes. And if you can teach people how to sell in a way that is consistent, that is that is that is always ongoing, there's there are people who are looking for that information. There's a reason that some people start the door knocking jobs, uh, selling, selling knives, selling vacuum cleaners, selling encyclopedias, selling water. They start their journeys there. But because they're such great salesmen, they're such great people, people, people that they become multimillionaires and eventually multi-billionaires because they knew how to sell. If any of you go back and watch the movie, um, the founder which was talking about Ray Kroc and the, and the McDonald's brothers, there's a reason that Ray Kroc ended up becoming the founder of McDonald's, even though the McDonald's brothers had a successful business. He knew what they didn't know. He knew and understood sales. What they understood was customer service. Now, how do these two tie in? If you have good customer service in any business, it's going to help to increase your amount of sales. Some people don't some people don't care what the product is. Some people don't care about the price. They care how you treat them. So as a as a as a former former customer service representative, I spent at least 20 years in the industry. And one of the things that I always understood was people are just looking to be treated fairly. But there are different ways that you can treat people fairly that make them feel warm, that make them feel welcome them and make them want to come back each and every time. If you if you master these these two skills, sales and customer service, then you can take a business to a completely different level. You can take them out of the stratosphere just by flipping that switch and understanding how do I sell my product consistently? There are some great products on the market that no one knows about. And guess why? The people who invented it are more they think more in terms of creation. They think more in terms of the process of bringing it to the market, but they don't understand sales and they don't understand customer service. So the one of the most important teams on any business team is going to be your sales team, because guess what? If you're not selling, you're not making money. If you're not making money, you can't pay your people. So your sales department is huge. So understanding how to sell. Zig Ziglar wrote a few great books about it, and he became known as 
one of the sales gurus in the industry. These books are something that people are looking for. They're looking for proven sales strategies. They're looking for processes that can help them increase their revenue. If you can increase a company's revenue, guess what? Nine times out of 10, they're going to purchase that book. Not only are they going to purchase one book, but if I own a, if I run a sales team and you've given me some strategies that work, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to recommend it to everybody on my sales team. And eventually people on the sales team go to sales conferences. They're going to talk and your name and your book is going to start getting mentioned. But don't be that person who writes this great book and doesn't do the one thing you practice or you preach. And that is sales. Right. So sales is huge. Customer service is huge as well. I did a speech many, many, many years ago um, when I was still in Toastmasters and the speech was entitled how to increase your sales, how to double your sales through great customer service. <clears throat> the business owners in the room said, where can I buy this speech? Because it was so profound. Customer service is an essential part of any business. It's one of the things that's missing in the industry right now. And do me a favor if you think I'm if you think I'm lying. Go to your favorite restaurant. Write down the things that they're doing for customer service. You'll see that what they're doing separates them to go to another restaurant and check out what this other restaurant is doing. I promise you they're not going to be identical. It's going to be like night and day. So take some time. And if you are in the industry of sales and customer service, put some things together, put it on paper so that people understand how to improve their sales and customer service process. And I guarantee you, you'll see revenue because people are looking for it every single day. Next is leadership and management, leadership and management, leadership and management. This one is, is huge, right? Because we've all had those great and leadership and management is specific to business writers, but it goes into every field of our life. If you've had a great, great leader, you know what a great leader looks like. If you've had a great manager, you know what a great manager looks like. If you've been a great leader or a great manager, you know what it feels like to, to empower others, right? And that's one of the things that is so huge in the industry right now that people are missing good leaders. They're missing good managers because people who are good at what they do, nine times out of 10, their teams run like this. They run like clockwork. They run like clockwork because they know how to empower, they know how to elevate, and they know how to promote from within, right? These are these are things that great leaders and great managers do. I remember working in a in a call center, true, true story. And this, I'm going somewhere with this. When I when I first worked in this call center, I became a supervisor within two months. I went from being a temporary agent to a supervisor in two months. I had a big head about it. I was so I was I was so excited. I was like, man, I'm the only person that's ever done this. Can't nobody talk to me. I'm the best. Well, my team showed me different because my first team out of 16 teams in a call center, we were number 14 on the list. What that said to me is, yeah, you may be good at what you do. But you haven't taught them how to be be good. I had to take some time and really do some introspective work. Look inside. What was I doing wrong? Because as a manager, as a leader, you have to do those things. Here's what happened. When I did go, go and look inside, I realized what was missing from my team. I was doing this. You better, you better, you better, you better. And when I started getting away from telling them what they should do and showing them how to do it, if there were extra calls, if the, the queue was high, I jumped on the phones. When it came down to when it came down to our coaching, what I started coaching for was not what they were doing. They knew the metrics. They knew how to hit the metrics. What they needed to know was how do I move up? Because most people are looking for their opportunities to advance within a company. As a result of starting to focus on their with them, what's in it for me? What ended up happening is we went from number 14 in that call center to number two, one of the best teams in the in the in the in the call center the great thing about it was that we started having fun as a team the, everybody the some of the people on the team started stepping up as leaders they started showing their leadership abilities because they felt empowered there were awards there were there were things that we recognized within the team that everybody said oh my god i just i can't believe that i'm part of this this is so so fun 
other managers would come to our team meetings and they were excited when they left. They felt filled because they didn't feel like they had stepped into another another meeting. They said that they felt as though they had stepped into another celebration. And that's what it's all about. When you can teach people how to turn the atmosphere around as a manager or a leader, most managers and most most managers and most leaders are stuck in a rut of how do I get people to perform? There's simple systems that can help every team perform and outperform everyone else. You just have to bring those systems to them because it's a huge problem. That's what they're looking for. If you can teach a leader how to relieve some of that stress, they will pay you for that book and they'll tell others about it. Because remember, most leaders, most people in management, most people in and uh, most people in leadership and management, they spend the majority of their time focused on how to improve their team. Right. If you can teach them how to improve their team, what you're going to do is teach them how to reserve that time, give that time back to their family and the ones that they really love. And you're going to teach their teach them how to have better relationships with those people that they lead, because there's two types of there's two types of of managers. One is the one that just just kind of helicopters over and, and hovers over all of their employees and says, you better do this. You didn't do that. You better do this. And you didn't do that. And guess what those employees are doing? They dread coming to work because they dread being around that. They dread being around that that manager. The other is the one who, who teaches them how to become their best selves. And when you teach someone how to get the best out of themselves, what they're going to do is reward you every time because one, they're going to start being their best selves. Two, your team is going to start elevating. And three, those people who are slacking on your team start to see how much fun is actually happening around them. And they want to be part of it. It's simple processes and simple steps. But these are books that people are looking for. Management and leadership. These are some of the top books in business, especially for um, corporate employees. They're looking for ways to empower and elevate their employees. So this may be a book that if you know business and you know leadership, then you need to be in it because it's not just organizations that are in the corporate structure, but there are there are there are nonprofit organizations. There are regular organizations where people have finally stepped into a leader leadership position that are not corporate, that are not paid positions, but they want to understand how to become better leaders and build better teams. Right. Think about those things the next time you set you sit down to write. If you can't think about if you can't come up with the topic for your book, it may be management and leadership. If you have the skills and you know true management and leadership. And here's the last one for business. And these aren't all the topics for for business uh, writers, but these are just a few topics. Financial management and accounting, financial management and accounting every year. People who are entrepreneurs or business owners, they dread tax time. They dread tax time. They dread bookkeeping. Why? Because that may not be their forte. That may not be their strong, their strong suit. But if you do have a, a background in accounting or in financial management, then you can teach those things. Break it down. Make it simple. Because those principles are things that people are missing in their in their businesses right now. They're looking for ways to get their their money right in their business. They can bring in the money, but they don't know how to place it in different boxes so that they aren't being heavily taxed at the end of the year. They want to know how to increase their profits. If you have those answers, then give them the answers. Write it, break it down into into book form. Accounting tax tax uh Tax numbers, accounting, bookkeeping, um, payroll, bonuses. All of these things are, are things that people are looking for as we speak. And again, if you can break down financial management and accounting, these are things that people are looking for. There are plenty of people out there right now who talk about, well, I can show you how to get business credit. But it costs, it costs hundreds and thousands of dollars for businesses to get this information. Your book may be the thing that people are looking for because you may know how to get business credit for for organizations. If you know how to get business business credit, because guess what? Most people are still using their Social Security number and know nothing about using their EIN. 
Most people that are new entrepreneurs know nothing about getting an, an established EIN. They think that when they get their DBA, their LLC, their their corporate their corporate or their 501c3 that that's where the ball stops no there are so many other aspects to business and finance that if you have the information break it down for them and show people how they can they can step into that realm and and become better at it because we all know that as a business owner you may be the person wearing all of the hats for your business you are the the ceo you are the you are the marketer. You are the person who does the design. You are the person who does the finance and the books. You are the person who who makes sure that everybody knows that you're out there. You are the person who's doing the selling. You are the person who has to be great customer service while at the same time being collections. All of these things are all of these are elements of a business. But if you can break down at least one of those niche topics, then what happens is people are looking for it and they will come to you. If you have all of this information, don't put it all in one book. Break it down into simple categories. One book for this, one book for that. Each category has its own book. Now you have a book series. This is how you get into the game of writing for business. Um, again, those topics mean entrepreneurship, starting a business, marketing and branding, sales and customer service entrepreneurship and and management financial management and accounting all of these things are all of these topics are things that people are looking for as we speak put your information out there and let the world tell you whether they want it or not and i guarantee you they will let you know this was a great book if you wrote it properly this was a great book and you changed my business all you need is a few people that are starting to say that and it will build confidence in yourself and your business writing so once again listen guys this is all i have for you i'm excited about this topic the reason that i'm excited is because i love entrepreneurship i love business and i love writing um or i love being an author so with that being said if this information was helpful to you do me a favor go ahead and like comment share and subscribe like the like the podcast share it with a friend who may be working on their on their project um comment let me know what you liked about it and then the last is subscribe that way we can keep you can keep getting this great information day after day after day because the goal is to put out a podcast every day that helps you go from where you are to where you want to be as an author and take your career to the next level so again just go ahead and like comment share and subscribe um once again my name is Sugar Ray Destin Jr. I'm the founder and CEO of BOBM Publishing. Listen, I love you guys to life. Until next time.